Welcome back. We've made it to the part of our program where you are going to start learning about candlestick patterns. Now candlesticks are one of the most valuable tools that we've got as a technical trader because they show us day-to-day -day information of the way that that trading sentiment is shaping up. One of the valuable things you're going to discover is that within just one day of trading we can actually get a pretty good pulse of what the future might be over the next three to four days of trading. So let's get started. In this lesson we're going to learn about candlesticks as a basic introduction and then we're specifically specifically going to target in on single line candles. So let's start with an introduction to candlesticks. As we talk about candlesticks, the first thing I'd like to share with you is the history. Candlesticks actually come to us from Japan and a very deep history of Japanese uh, rice trading. If you're not familiar with the Japanese rice trading, it started in the late 1600s and in through the 1700s and that whole Dojima rice exchange that evolved out of Japan really became one of the first futures trading markets that we've had in the world. It was a very well established um, exchange, it had a lot of trading activity and a lot of technical analysis history evolved out of that exchange. One of the most famous traders out of that era was a guy by the name of Sokia Honmet. And this guy's a legendary Japanese trader. It has been said that he placed over a hundred consecutive trades for a win. Now I can't prove that, but what I do know is in 1751, 1752, somewhere around there, he uh, wrote his first book on the subject of technical analysis. And all the way back then, a couple hundred years before Charles Dow, Sokia Honmet was basically saying the exact same theories that Charles Dow would later write about that we've now codified into modern technical analysis. Well, out of all of that came this study that we call candlestick trading. Very fascinating history. If you ever get a chance to learn more about it, it's worth the time. It's very interesting. But let's learn about candlesticks here. So candlesticks come to us from the Japanese rice traders. They're often called Japanese candlesticks. They did begin to evolve in the 1700s as we just talked about. But by 1870, when the Japanese stock market was established, candlesticks were completely the commonplace. So somewhere between the 1700s and the 1800s, hundreds, they went from kind of being innovated and starting to be used in commonplace to where it was the standard, everything was built around candlestick trading. And then eventually they were brought to America by a guy named Steve Nissen. And that happened in the year 1991 when he wrote his first book on the subject called Japanese Candlestick Charting. It's a very good book and if you ever get a chance to look at it, uh, I, I certainly would encourage you all to read it. I'll give you a little bit of interesting history there. The way that Japanese candlesticks evolved here in America Steve Nissen was working for a uh, large firm here in America and a female co-worker who was from Japan was in a break room with him one day and she was hand drawing candlestick charts. And he looked over and he said, well, what is that? And she started telling him about the candlestick charts and he went on a mission to discover and to uncover these candlestick charts. So he actually had several works translated from Japanese and then he wrote his first book in 1991, as we've just mentioned. That book then traveled all the way back across the ocean to Japan and a lot of people credit Steve Nissen, not just for bringing candlesticks to America, but also for the resurgence of the use of candlesticks in Japan. So a little interesting history there. As we talk about the basics of candlesticks, you need to understand that each candlestick is going to represent an individual time period. Now that could be a day, it could be a week, a month, or any of the intraday time periods. Whatever the time frame is on your chart, each candlestick will represent one of those time frames. So again, if you're looking at a daily chart, each candlestick represents a day. If you're looking at a monthly chart, each candlestick will represent an entire month's worth of trading activity. Or let's say you're looking at a five minute intraday chart, each candlestick is going to represent a five minute time period of trading. So whatever time frame you're looking at, each candlestick represents one of those time frames on that chart. The candlestick is going to consist of the open, the high, the low, and the closing price, and we're going to have them distinguished by two colors, and those colors are black and white. Now as we look at the two basic candlesticks, you can see these here on the screen. We've got a white candle and we've got a black candle. Generally speaking, the white candle is considered bullish and the black candle is considered bearish. Now I say it that way because the opening price and the closing price dictates the color. But as you're going to see in a minute, sometimes we can actually have a bullish day for the market and a black candlestick. And I'll show you that distinction here in just a minute. Let's look at how these candles are constructed. As we've already mentioned, candlesticks are built around the open, the high, the low, and the close. Now you'll remember from our earlier lessons in level one that all of our charting ultimately comes down to these four price points, the open, the high, the low, and the close. Our bar charts are built on the open, high, low, close, 
as are our candlesticks. As we look at these candlesticks, you're going to notice that it contains two key components. We've got the candle shadow and we've got the candle body. The upper and the lower portion that indicates the high and the low for the day, that is going to be the candle shadow. And then the main portion that's going to either be black or white, we call that the candle body or the real body of the candle. And so every candlestick is going to have these components, the open high, the low, and the close, and it's going to be composed of a candle shadow and the candle body. We have upper shadows, we have lower shadows, but we just have one candle body. Now the distinction here is with a white candle, we've got a higher closing price Price, then we have an opening price and with a black candle we've got a lower closing price then we have opening price and that's how the candlestick gets distinguished between a white candle body or a black candle body again the white candle body has a higher close than open and the black candle body has a lower close than open if we look at the way it's constructed here the white candle has the opening price and it draws up to the closing price and the black candlestick has the opening price and it draws down to the closing price and the result is what we would call an open candle or a solid candle. Now the open candle ends up looking like a white candle because it's usually on a white background. Consequently, it's a white candle. But technically speaking, we actually call it an open candle and that shows that the buying pressure uh, were, to, were to drive this trade higher and we had a higher close than we had open for the day. With that distinction being made about the open candles and the solid candles, I want to show some variety. It's very common today when you open up a new charting application that you won't actually see black and white candles, but rather what you will often see are green and red candles. Now I personally, I don't particularly like the green and red candles. I feel like I'm looking at a Christmas tree and I like Christmas trees, but not on my stock charts. But let me explain the green and the red candles for you so you can understand them and then I will explain my position and you can decide how you want to use them in your own trading. When you're looking at a green and a red candlestick chart, the green candles represent what you would normally associate with a white candle and the red candles represent what you would normally associate with a black candle. So in other words, to create a green candle, we've got a higher close than open and to create a red candle, we've got a lower close than open. So why don't I like red and green candles? Well, because if you look at it, the green candle is a solid green and the red candle is a solid red. Do you see the distinction? They're both solids. And so my brain, since I kind of grew up learning these candlesticks the more traditional way, my brain says I've got two solid candles and I have a harder time interpreting the data. Now look at this over here on the right side and you're going to see the black and white candle. You see the white candle is more of what we would call the open candle. And the only reason it's white is because the background is white and the black candle of course is a solid candle and it's solid because we filled it in. And so as I've already mentioned, my brain learned as I was learning candlesticks to associate solid color with a solid candle. So I'll actually look at a green candle and I sometimes will think to myself, oh, that's actually a solid black candle. And it's not really. And so I have to be very in intentional about my interpretation if I'm reading a green and red candlestick chart. Now, as I've already mentioned, a lot of modern charting softwares default to red and green. I always change that. I don't like red and green, but if you can work with the red and green candles and you're happy with it, you know, so be it, I'm happy with you being happy. So whatever works for you, I just want you to understand why I personally gravitate towards the white and the black candles, and you'll always see on my charts white and black. Let me show you some other variations though. Take a look over here at this chart over here on the left, and you're gonna notice that we've got white and blue candles. Now, I don't have any problem with white and blue. Why? Because my brain says blue is solid, just like black, and white is open, just like the normal white candle. Since it's on a white background, I can easily interpret that and it doesn't bother me. Again, this is the way that candles were intentionally created, so it is easy for me to interpret that. If you look at the chart over here on the right side, now I've got white and red candles. And again, I don't have any problem interpreting this because again, the white candle is really just a reflection of the transparent open candle coming through through with a back, background that's white, and the red candle is just a solid candle body. So if you like any of these colors, I'm totally fine with you using that as well. Let me show you another distinction. If we look over here at these candles, notice on the right side, let's start with the right, notice that I've got what appears to be an inversion here. We've got black and white candles, but I actually would interpret these correctly, even though they're inverted. 
And the reason is because the black background is simply coming through that open transparent candle. This is the way again that candles were actually created. And the white background here is really the solid. So you can see that it's not my distinction of black and white that is so important to me, but the distinction of is it an open candle that actually has the transparency coming through versus a solid background. Again, come over to the green and red and now my brain starts to do uh, somersaults trying to interpret which one of these is solid, which one of these is an opening candle. And so that's why I personally gravitate to the black and white, or if I am on a black background, I will, I will change the candles to somehow reflect something that looks like a transparent and a solid candle. Again, whatever works for you is fine, but I wanted you to understand these distinctions and I wanted you to understand the historical precedent for how these candles were created.